It's finally happened, everyone. I have made the Mary Poppins of gate drive transformers. And I call it that because it's practically perfect in every way. The other day, I tell you, I had a revelation. I came across some websites with guides on how to make the gate drive transformer. So, what I got here is a gate drive transformer with about 100 microhenries of inductance. The leakage inductance is 0.1 microhenries and the interwinding capacitance is only about 23 picofarads. And it's just about perfect. Okay, so I'm going to power this up in just a minute. Let me just get that nice and straight. Now, as you can see, I've connected a couple of MOSFETs to the transformer as a dummy load and I'm going to measure across one of them. So, let's turn it on. And we've got our almost perfect waveform. Okay, yes, we got a little bit of overshoot, but that's nothing that I cannot sort out. But as you might be able to see, there is no ringing whatsoever. And we got a nice straight transition here and another nice straight transition here. All I need to do is just add a bit more series resistance and that should take care of this little meh. And guys, I think I found my ideal gate drive transformer. So what I've got to do now is make a new secondary because I want to make one that operates somewhere under 500 kilohertz. Not sure how well I'm going to be able to pull that off, but so I'm going to test some secondaries. Let's see what we get. Okay, so here is set up for testing secondary resonant frequency. I could use Slayer Exciter, but why am I talking like that? So over here we've got my frequency generator that you've seen in a few videos now and of course that's connected to this primary here through a 220 ohm resistor and then we've got the secondary under test connected to this little thing here which is going to be the feedback transformer because I decided I'd make the feedback transformer and while I was at it test how well it works and it seems to work pretty well so uh, I can now test the resonant frequency of my secondaries. So, the base of the secondary goes into the primary of this little transformer, and the other side of this transformer's primary goes to ground, which is connected here, and of course that's going to the oscilloscope's ground, and then the secondary is connected to the oscilloscope's input, and of course, the other side of that secondary is also connected to ground. And that's a 4 to 50 turn transformer. So we turn on. Okay. Bring up the frequency till it starts resonating really good. Which appears to be about there. You just adjust the sensitivity and the time base. Okay, we're on the highest time base. So let's see if we can find where that peaks. It's right about there. And as you can see, we've got a nice clean sine wave. So when we have a nice clean sine wave and at the highest amplitude, we found the resonant frequency, which in this case is about 1.2 megahertz. So this secondary Look at that, if I bring my hand near it, I can detune it. And now it doesn't even look like a sine wave anymore. Actually, let's see what the frequency would be with my hand near it. I'll have to go down, so that's how it affects it. So that's reduced the frequency to about 1.1 megahertz now. Okay, now I need to adjust the frequency again, so we get a nice strong and clean sine wave again. So I can say this secondary is about 1.2 megahertz. And I've got a couple of other secondaries I want to test. I've got this one here, which I built back in the early days of the How to Build a Vacuum Tube Tesla Coil series, which you didn't actually get to see because this secondary didn't work. So let's see what the actual frequency of it is. And maybe we can shed some light on that. Okay, so let's see what we get with this one. 
And of course, it would help if I plugged my oscillator into my amplifier. Okay, so we're already getting some output. It's not quite sine wave, so let's adjust the frequency. Okay, so we get a nice, strong and clean sine wave. Okay, so this one is almost the same as this, except it's 1.26, so... So I'm not sure why this one didn't work with any of my tester coil projects. I mean, I tried this one on the solid state coil and the vacuum tube coil, and I couldn't get much of a result with either, so... Now we're going to test the, what I call the reservoir coil from the vacuum tube tester coil project, just to see what the resonant frequency of this is. I've got no idea what we'll get with this one. So let's find out. Okay, adjusting frequency. Oh, there we go. We've got 1.07 megahertz. So, so far all of these have been in the megahertz region. Although I'm working on another coil that should be in the kilohertz region. Now, I would have liked to have tried this secondary that I what, that I used with the vacuum tube tester coil project. Unfortunately, this had a bit of a nasty flashover when I tried this on my solid state coil. Because this ground wire here, I mean this feedback wire here, which is this wire, it sort of arced through the plastic, it was sort of like that, and then it just flashed over, and uh, you can see, sort of, right there, or at least you would be able to see if the camera's focused. Stop focusing on the background, there we go, you can see, got a nasty little bleh right there, so... Uh, and my feedback wire has decided to become unraveled, so... There's no way I can measure the resonant frequency of that now. It's it's just completely gone. So now we're going to test one of my first secondaries I ever wound, which is this one here. It's had many battle scars, as you can see, where it's arced through the tape that I put around it. But I think this one might actually still be usable. So, I'm going to stick it in there. And let's see what we get. Alright, let's see what we get with this one. I've got no idea what this one is going to do. Okay, let's try it raising the frequency. Okay, we've got a output there, about 1.3 megahertz, but that might be a harmonic. So, I'm going to go down, see if we can get a stronger output anywhere. Oh, there we are. I thought 1.3 megahertz might be a little too high. So this one... Let me just get that just right. We're on 613 kilohertz. Or according to this meter, 0.613, but it's the same thing. Okay, so here we have another secondary, which I spent the better part of yesterday winding. I managed to find another discarded microwave which I took the fan motor out and took the fan motor apart. Here's the bobbin from that motor. And now most of that wire is on this. So, we've got a new secondary. So, let's see how it sounds. I mean, let's see how well it works. I'll turn on. Okay, and I'm not seeing anything for some reason on the scope. Might be just because we're not in tune. There we go. Just trying to get that nice and good. Alright, so we're at 668 megahertz. I mean 668 kilohertz. And that appears to be the resonant frequency of this particular secondary. And I've got a good idea for a top load I could use piece of cardboard with some foil wrapped around it. Actually, I'm a little bit concerned about this, because when I put this on this, it's going to go on sort of like that. So that's lowered the frequency a little bit. But that's why I want it on there anyway, to lower the frequency. thing is, I'm a little bit concerned that sparks might shoot out the side of my top load. So, if that happens, I'll have to use a different top load. And this 
is what I'm going to use as my breaker. That's just going to sit on the top like that. If I can just get that on there. Retune it. So we're now 650 megahertz, and that looks like a Tesla coil now. Although I think I will use a smaller screw. This is kind of ridiculous. Well, that just about wraps it up for this video. So, got a good secondary. Not quite as low as I hoped it would be, but... Anyway, in the next video, I'm going to be doing the output stage. So until then, like I always say, until next time, goodbye.